I'm going to walk through adding a an event listener to a map in Leaflet that changes the zoom and the center of the map. Sort of like this one. If I click this button, you see that the map zooms in to the content in this case, but you could have multiple buttons and those buttons could go to different places or they could behave in different ways. Um, what we'll do right now is just talk through how, how you make something like this work. So what I'm going to do is start with a simple um, Cardo map in Leaflet without a button that does this for us and I'm going to talk through how I would add it to the page. So I'm going to start with my original Cardo map with one layer and you'll see that it's mostly pretty straightforward um, leaflet in where we are creating the map. We are adding a base layer. We are initializing Cardo and adding one layer to the map. So in order to change the viewport of the map, the center and the zoom, we'll use a function on map that allows you to do that. And one way that I will figure out which function to use, there are a couple of ways. One way, if I really wasn't sure, I might do something like this. So I'm, I'm looking at my, my web page. If I look back at my JavaScript, uh, I'm going to note that the variable named map contains my leaflet map, right? So if I, um, if I open up developer tools, in this case, I'm looking at this in Firefox. If you're used to looking at it in Chrome, it might be a little disorienting, but it's pretty much the same thing. Um, if I go to the console, I can type the word map, and that should show me the contents of that variable. In this case, the variable has a bunch of things going on in it. It's an object created by Leaflet when we create the map. So this is a lot to look at. What I might start doing is I can say map and then use dot notation to just get a list of all of the things within the object. By convention, things that start with an underscore aren't actually um, public, so I'm going to skip all the things with underscores, and here are the, the functions that I actually can use on the map. Um, it's still a lot to look at, as you can see, uh, but here we come to things like set max bounds, um, set zoom and set view. Um, if you've played around with any of these functions before, hopefully um, hopefully they're not too mysterious. Um, Map.setZoom, if I call this, um, you can call it with just parentheses. Um, you'll see it didn't do much of anything here because you need to set the zoom parameter to something like Five. Now we we have zoomed into zoom level five. If I back back out to say eight, um, actually I just zoomed into eight. Uh, if I back back out to say two, now I'm very far zoomed out, and I, th I believe three might have been the original. Right, that looks more or less the way it looked when we loaded the page. But. Um, that's, that's more or less what the zoom in and zoom out buttons do. As long as you're able to zoom, they set the zoom to one more or one less. What I, what I want to try out is um, map.setView. And what map.setView does 
is it takes the center coordinates and a zoom level. So something like, uh, if I had to guess, um, I don't remember off the top of my head if it's, if latitude or longitude comes first. I'm going to guess that longitude comes first and say five. Okay, I guessed wrong. I am now in Antarctica. Uh, so if I swap these coordinates so that it's latitude comma longitude, something like that, uh -huh. much closer to what I wanted. So usually I wouldn't do this by guesswork. I would pick a, um, a center that looks good to me, something like this. And you can actually just ask Leaflet what that center is. Since we're here in the console, we can say map.getCenter. And there we go. There's the latitude and longitude. So um, I could instead say map.setView. Um, it's latitude, comma, longitude. So maybe 29.305 and negative 78.508. And you see it didn't change much uh, if I zoom in with that. Yeah, so now I have a latitude and longitude. Um, so I have this little bit of code, this one line of code, that does what I want. It changes the center, it changes the zoom. If I copy that so that I can reuse it later and refresh the page, remember I'm going to start back at the original center and zoom. If I enter that again, does exactly what I want. So I want a button that allows you to run this one line of code. As with, um, as with most situations where you're adding an event listener to a page, you need to think of a couple of different things. So you need to think about adding the element that's going to be affected to your HTML. You might need to style that element to make it show up. And then in your JavaScript, you need to select that element and add the event listener to it. So why don't we do that? Before I move on, I just want to point out that there's another way to find out what the set view function does and how it works. And that is to look at leaflets homepage, that's leaflet.js.com, and go to the docs. This is the reference. And under the map object, this is where all of the map functionality goes, like the core map functionality. If I, um, down below map methods, can look for modifying map state because that's what I'm doing. I'm changing the zoom and I'm changing the center. So if I click on that, um, you see those uh, methods, those functions on the map object are all listed nicely here. Um, and right up, at the top, right up at the top is set view. And you see that set view takes uh, three possible parameters. It takes a latitude and longitude as the center takes a number for the zoom, and then it has some options. Those could be useful um, if you wanted to affect how the view will change. Um, if you click on that, you can see, okay, these are these are the options that I, I get. Um, the big one is you can either, you can say, do not animate that zoom. Um, and the way you do that, it's a little funky at first, um, but if I refresh the page, uh, so you would add the options after the zoom and options in leaflet, as in a lot of JavaScript libraries, go in an object. So I'm adding the curly braces and within the curly braces, I'm going to say um, animate false. And watch, watch the difference here. 
there was no um, there was no animation from the original center and zoom into the new one. So if I refresh and do that with animate true, which is the default, you can see. Okay, that that got a little messed up because of the highlighting. Let's do it one more time. There. So you can see it's a little bit smoother, but sometimes you don't want to do that. Sometimes you just want your page to go directly where you want it to go. Okay. So I've been I have not changed this code yet. I'm going to remix it now so that I do not change code that I should not change. And once I do, I'm going to go through each of those steps as I mentioned them before. So first I'm going to add a button and um, I'm going to do that right here. I could, um, I'll probably put it in its own div and give it some text, something like zoom to data, something like that. <clears throat> Where's my button? Well, uh, we need to style it. It's probably down here. As you can see, it's down in the bottom left right now. Um, we need to change the CSS to make it show up where we want. In my case, I'm just going to overlay that on top of the map up in the top right. But you will probably do something different based on your needs. And Remember to style things. I'm going to add a class to the div around that button. And I'll make it something like button overlay. So this is just a made up name that I'm using to refer to it um, here in the styles. So I select it with dot button overlay. And to position it um, on top of the map this way, I'll probably say position absolute, which allows me to place it exactly where I want it. And I might say right uh, 15 pixels and top 15 pixels. And you see, you might have seen that, it appears to show up and then disappears. And that's because of the Z index on the page. Um, that's the Z index lower will show up um, further back on the page. It gets drawn first. Higher Z index gets drawn on top. So I want a higher Z index. Um, usually if I'm not sure, I'll just make this very large and see what happens. Hey, that worked. Um, I will often use the pick an element tool to pick the element that I'm styling. I'll look at the button overlay, and I might reduce the Z index a bit to something where it still works, but it's a bit lower. Uh, the thing about having really large ones, it's it works fine, but if you have other code that then needs to um, position something on top of that, then you need to keep going higher. Uh, it's better if you can make it a little bit lower. Um, so Z index 1000, that works fine. So I will update that in the code here. And yes, we have a button. The button does not do anything, right? Because there's no event listener. When you're adding an event listener, you're going to do a couple of things. You're going to select the button, and then you're going to add the event listener to it. So select the button. Um, in order to select the button, that needs to have its own class name. Class equals um, zoom to data button. I'll try to make this as descriptive as I can. Um, and I will copy it so I do not forget. And in my JavaScript, And back in my JavaScript, I'm going to add some code that selects that element. Something like um, I'm going to store it in a variable also. So var um, zoom to data 
button equals document dot query selector. So this is telling the browser, hey, look at the document. I want to query the document for a particular element. And the parameter here is a string that is a valid CSS selector. So I'm putting the dot at the beginning because I'm selecting by class name. I can refer back to the HTML class equals zoom to data button. Uh, so in the JavaScript, I'm going to say dot zoom to data button. Great. And at each step here, I, I do not trust myself. I've been doing this for a long time. Uh, you make mistakes and that's okay. Uh, but what I'm going to do is use console.log. Zoom to data button. And make sure that the element shows up in the console when the page loads. There it is. You can actually hover over it and it will highlight on the page. That can be very handy. Right? We're so close. We're so close. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is say zoom to data button. I need to add an event listener to it. Luckily, the function name for adding an event listener is pretty straightforward. Add event listener. And I'm listening for the button to be clicked. So I'm going to say listen for the click event. And when that button is clicked, what do I want to do? I want to run a function. And inside that function, I'm going to run some code. Um, in this case, first things first, I'm just going to say the button was clicked and make sure that I did that much right. Um, truly, every line or two it is um, very, it's reasonable to just confirm that it's working. Um, so, I'm going to come back to the page with my console open and click on the button and it is clicked. Um, you see that once you start repeating yourself in the console, most developer tools will just start counting that for you. Um, so while it looks like maybe it stopped working, it's actually just this count is going up. Okay, last thing, we're really close now, um, is we want to run that code that we had before. Maybe we lost that code. Maybe I had copied it before, but I um, maybe I copied something else and I no longer have that code. Luckily, in the developer tools in the console, you can press the up key, the up arrow key, and that will go back through the previous things that you typed in. So in this case, this is perfect because there is exactly the code that we want to run. I'm going to copy that. And instead of console.log, I'm just going to run that code. Great. So just before we check, quick recap, I'm selecting the button. And I'm adding an event listener to it. In the function, in the second parameter for that event listener, I am setting the view of the map like that. And let's see if it worked. Yes, great. Um, so if we wanted to add another button to the mix, I'll just do that really briefly, just so you can see how that would work. Maybe I want a reset button. Um, so again, coming back to the HTML, I'll do this briefly. Changing the name, the label on the button rather. And I'm changing the class name to reset button. Yep. And then remembering the reset button class name, going back to my JavaScript. Remember, these are the four lines that select the button add event listener. I'm going to copy and paste them. But if you feel more comfortable typing them out again, that is fine too. Some copying, pasting. <clears throat> and I'm going to start from the stop, 
from the start of that code and change it to make sure that I'm always referring to the right thing. First things first, I probably want a different variable name here. This is no longer the zoom to data button. What I have now is the reset button. And I'll go from the beginning of the line to the end of the line. Make sure I'm selecting the right button by changing the selector there. Next line, no longer talking about the zoom to data button, talking about the reset button. And I'm still listening for a click, that is correct. But I'm changing the view. Um, in this case, the, the changing the view would not do anything. Um, or it would do the same exact thing as zoom to data, right? Reset doesn't do anything. If I zoomed out, and hit reset, goes back to where I zoomed to data. So what I want to do is zoom to where I originally was in this case. Um, and I can find that up here. The original coordinates are these. And the zoom is three. Obviously, there's no rule saying you have to do this um, this way. It doesn't have to have a reset button necessarily. But this is just for demonstration purposes, um, so you can see what it's like to have multiple buttons. What I often see people doing is maybe they have a relatively sparse map, and they have five or so places that they want to zoom into um, to focus the user's attention on a certain part of the map. This is great for that sometimes. Um, so you might have, say, a national map, but you really only have data for five of the cities. You might have a button for each of those. You don't have to use buttons. It could be a drop down. It could be links in text next to the map. They don't have to necessarily be overlaid this way. It could be in a sidebar. It could be that the map is much smaller and there is text alongside it and the text includes those links that add uh, that have event listeners that do this zooming it's pretty wide open once once you understand the concept and um, i hope that gets you closer to understanding the concept